everyone, this is Janet Wang. I'm a visual artist working from North Vancouver, and I'm a district artist in residence working for Artists for Kids to bring you these workshops here so that you can create your art from home. Now, what we're looking at here is one of my artworks. This is a part of one of a larger installations that I've made. This one was shown at the uh, Central Calgary Public Library. And the pattern that you're seeing here looks a lot like what you might find on fabric and maybe old fashioned wallpaper. And that's actually how I showed these. These were made into drapery and into um, coverings for the windows as well too. And you can see here, there's lots of little drawings again too that make up the bigger pattern that we see here. Now, one of the things you'll notice in this pattern is there are a lot of natural elements and these are contrasting to some of the more famous landmarks that we might find in Calgary. So some of the buildings and the saddle dome and so forth that we might see there. So this is one of the things we're going to play around with today, contrasting the natural world with the built world and looking for how we can put these two things together. Hi everyone, we're going to start our next project here. So if you didn't get a chance to do the first video activity, you can go back and watch that one on the Artist for Kids website and you can skip right through to the end when I talk about taking some flowers that we might find on a walk when we're outside or from our garden and pressing those because we'll want those as our materials for today. So you can see I have a selection of some of the things that I pressed uh, a couple of weeks ago so they're nice and dry and they've been pressed and you can see some of the colors stayed quite nicely. Now some of your color might not have worked out. I made some of these pink kind of petals and they turned a little bit more brown than I wanted to but they still looked pretty good so I still was able to use those. The other things we all want today is some form of glue. You may be able to use some tape, but glue is the easiest thing, especially a glue stick. If you have white glue, you'll want to use very little of it because white wet glue will make your paper um, wrinkle a little bit and might also make your flowers wrinkle up a little bit too. Other things I'm using today, I'm just using some different things. Um, you can just use normal paper, but I'm actually trying to use something that I found in my kitchen and it's called parchment paper. And I like parchment paper because it's nice and thin. So we're going to try and use a couple bits of that today. And again, you could just use regular paper that you might find around your house. Um, other things I'm going to have with me, maybe a pencil. I found a piece of chalk. My kids want to draw on the sidewalk, so we have some chalk. Um, but you can also use just a pencil crayon or a no normal pencil as well too. Scissors. I'm going to use a ruler as well. You can find anything that has a nice straight edge. So maybe just the cover of a book or something would work as well if you don't have a proper ruler. Okay, so let's get started. Um, you can see here, this is what we're going to be making today. We're going to be making a little kind of stained glass window um, frame here that we can hang onto our window so we can share our art with um, the people in our neighborhood and with our family as well too. So we're going to be using a few different materials. So I will, first of all, open up very gently one of these pieces of paper that I had um, where I put some of my pressed flowers in. So those look really interesting. So I'd love to use those. And I've got some other ones um, just around my workstation here that I'll play with. Okay, let's get started. Now, the first thing we're going to want is a piece of paper. So I've got a piece of black construction paper here. If you don't have black construction paper, you can even just use um, some cardstock maybe, and you can, to make it a little bit darker, you can color in with some felt marker when you're doing your design and then we can play around with cutting it out or even just regular paper will work just fine too. Okay, now what we're gonna do with our construction paper is we're going to fold it in half. So I'll match up my corners here and I will make sure that's a nice neat fold there. So that's gonna be my first step. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw a design onto it. And this design is going to be our frame. And when I think about like maybe a window frame and that window frame is going to be like us looking outside of our windows. And I've been doing that a lot lately, looking out at the trees and listening to the birds and seeing them flying around. Um, also maybe seeing my neighbors walking by as well too and waving hello. So our window is the way we see out into our world and we can think about that like a picture frame too. So that's what we'll make our picture like a window today. So what I'll do is I'll take a piece of chalk. You can also just use a regular pencil as well too. On darker paper, uh, the graphite of your pencil is shiny enough that you should be able to see it even though it won't be that 
bright in contrast. So I'm just going to draw the idea of a simple window frame. Now this is my fold up here. And I'll just help us keep our little sandwich for our window that we're going to create today a little neater. Now you can use your ruler here if you want. I sometimes like a little bit of a wobbly line anyways. I think that makes the line sometimes a bit more interesting. And then my last one. And then maybe you can think about maybe your window frame has more kind of lines to the frame inside if you want, but maybe I'll add something like I can see a lovely tree outside my window. with some branches. I'm going to make these branches kind of big because I need them to be pretty simple to cut out. Okay. So I've got some smaller shapes there that might be a bit trickier. I'll play around with that. Uh, maybe I can think about a nice kind of cloud in the sky. And this isn't really the right size, but maybe I just really like the mountains here in the North Shore. So we can think about some shapes. So again, different types of shapes to try and show what the world outside might look like. Okay, now these areas in here where I haven't drawn these kind of shapes are going to be my window. And so I'm gonna to need to cut this out. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is fold this very gently, but not do a crease in it and just do a little snip. I'm gonna make sure I have nothing on the other side, good. So that little snip this gives me an area here where I can stick my scissors in and I'm going to cut these, okay? And I'm going to be careful to leave parts of that tree attached to the window frame. Now, the more detailed you make this, the trickier it's going to be to glue later on, but that's fine. You don't have to rush. I'm going to go a little bit faster and simpler for this video. Okay. Nice curving lines. And then the sharper kind of lines you might see in the mountains. So Some of the things we've been doing is exploring the type of lines that we might see in the world around us and how we use different types of lines and shapes to show what we see around us in the world. And this also, with the idea of the window frame, kind of is a contrast between how the world that's built around us might be very different from the natural world and how we see very different shapes in those. So things are maybe a little bit more even when they're part of our house versus they're a little bit more wiggly. Here again, I have a little shape here, so I'm gonna do that little crease thing again too. They're a little bit more wiggly and less perfect, but really interesting. So trees have pretty cool patterns in them as well too, the way the trees branch out and spread out and go from bigger to smaller. So lots of interesting things to look for there. So maybe in this time, when we're maybe not as busy as we used to be, or maybe we're busier in different ways as well too, especially your parents might feel very busy in different ways. We should remember that one of the things we can do is try and look at the world around us a little differently too, right? I don't know about you guys, I've been hearing a lot more bird singing and I really love it. I think it's really super cool. Rather than hearing a lot of cars whooshing by. So these are some things that we can notice and then we can use our art to help us show those things too and communicate them to our friends or our family. Okay, so there's my little cutout. What we're going to do now is so that these chalk lines aren't showing, we're going to take the whole thing and really just very gently unfold it, and smooth it out for a second, and then we're going to refold it but in the other direction. So we're going to find that fold line and we're just going to use that line to help us fold it again the other way, okay? And you can choose whichever way you like it to look at it first while you're making this, but 
this will actually be an artwork that we can see from both sides. Okay, so I'm going to open that up now, and now this is going to be my work area. Okay, so you can see my original drawing again. Now the next thing we're going to need is a piece of paper that's going to contrast this, and I'm going to use a white piece of paper. Now this paper is what we call parchment paper, and this is something that you can find maybe in your kitchen, so you can ask your parents if you might have some. If you don't have parchment paper, you can also use just regular paper as well too. And that regular paper, maybe you won't do two layers, like I'm folding this right now, because you might not be able to see through it quite as well. But as we found by holding our things up to the window, we can actually see pretty well when we're looking through that. So what I'm going to do is now that I can hold this down, I can actually see where I'm going to need this to sit. So I'm just gonna make kind of a quick little mark of where I'm gonna cut this parchment paper. Again, you can use your ruler here too. <laughs> I'm just trying to go quickly. And again, you're not gonna see this inside it. What we just wanna make sure is that overlaps inside the frame, but it also sits just a little bit inside of it as well too, so we don't see the white paper sticking out. So this was folded in half, and I'm just going to quickly trim that. Trying to keep my sides together here, or these edges together. When you're cutting multiple things, just make sure you're not cutting your black paper underneath by accident. Get that a bit flatter. And do my last trims here. Okay, great. I'm gonna take that paper, I can recycle that part. Okay, now this is where we're gonna have to have a little bit of patience. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our glue stick. I've got a big one here. Maybe a smaller one might be more helpful. If you need uh, to use white glue, if that's what you have, that's fine. Just maybe use a little less of it. Or I like to sometimes put a little bit of it on a kind of plastic, maybe yogurt lid or something that you're not using anymore from your recycling and use a paintbrush to put it on. So I can control it a bit more and put it on nice and thin. And so I'm just kind of painting through all this half on the bottom here of my window frame. And then what I'll do is I'll take my parchment paper that I cut out before, and I'm going to fit that inside and make sure again it fits so it's covering all the opening and overlapping so it's gluing down. And I'm just going to press it down just gently. Okay. Open it up and I can just make sure everything's pressed. Use your fingers to kind of Iron that all out and make sure it's all touching and connecting to that glue. Okay, that feels pretty secure now. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to play around with some of the uh, flowers and leaves and different petals maybe that you've um, taken from outside and you've pressed and dried and I can arrange those in some different ways. I don't think I want the leaf to actually be on the tree. I think that might, it's a giant leaf, <laughs> but maybe it looks like something that's closer to us rather than something farther away from us, right? Maybe I can think about this here. And then maybe I've got another one. Maybe I'll save that one though, because I think my kids might want to make another one of these as well too. And then I also have some lovely, very delicate yellow um, petals that I took apart from a dandelion, or not a dandelion, sorry. I think this is from a daffodil, another flower. I can think about, you know, how I want to spread those out to fill up the space and then make all these really kind of lovely colors we're going to see here. And then I had left over from another one, a little bit of, dand this is dandelion, little dandelion fluff. I think that dandelions are pretty delicate, so I might just sprinkle that around so we get a little bit of that all over the page. Okay, and that would be kind of fun to spread that out. Just so we have a few different things going on. Okay, and you can play around with that for a while. There's no rush to make that finish, but what I'm going to do next, very carefully bring this around so you guys can see this. I'm going to put glue on this side of the parchment paper now. So I'm going to take my glue stick 
And again, trying to be gentle with this because especially if you start moving too fast, all those flower petals that we just arranged are pretty light and they're pretty delicate. Oops, <laughs> as you can see there, they can start to move around, especially my little dandelion fluff I did. So I'm gonna just hold the paper down maybe with my fingers and put a good amount of this glue stick on here, okay? Again, glue sticks are gonna be your best bet for this. If you're using white glue, this might get a little bit messy. So you can maybe even try and use some tape or something to close it up. Your flowers might move a bit, but maybe that's kind of cool. Maybe it'll be a little bit more like a kaleidoscope. Okay, so I've got glue all over that half. What I'm going to do now is just, again, I see, think I'm seeing the word gently a lot. We're going to press that down. I'll use my whole hand to kind of iron that nice and flat. It might wrinkle a little bit until it dries, but that looks pretty good. And you can already see the color pretty clearly through that. Now, one of the words I've used a lot is the word gentle. And this is one of the things right now is that maybe as we're trying to make our art, as we're trying to maybe talk to our families about how our day is or how we're feeling, just thinking about maybe slower, quieter ways to show that sometimes. And that's why I think art makes me feel a little bit better because it makes me maybe do things a couple times. I actually made a few different versions of this for you guys. And I'll show you uh, um, some samples of that too, perhaps. So I just glued that inside part of the black on the opposite side. I'm gonna fold the whole thing together. And if I do this nice and neatly, and again, slowly taking my time, we can make that all match up. So I like this idea of the window frame, kind of making us think about what is close to us, what is far from us. And we can see that. Okay. And you can hang that from your window and share it with your friends and your neighbors. You can take a picture of it and share it with us as well too, either to email or to Instagram with the hashtag AFK from home. And there we go. I have my little window frame using all these natural colors and different things we can find around our house.